I'm going to start some grass plugs today for my front yard. It's Christmas time. Crazy. But I want to do it in native soil. So, let's go out there. backyard. All right, the concept here is if you want to use native soil to make some plugs, um, or at least use native soil to grow seed inside the house and then take it outside later uh, when weather is better. I mean, the whole point here is we don't want uh, the undesirables coming back into our little seed pots that we're going to be making. Now, I use solo cups because you can buy them in bulk and they're not that expensive if you buy a lot of them. Uh, and they're deep. So that's why I use them. I just poke a little hole in the bottom. That's all, that's all you really need. Now I'm pulling the large chunks out, but I'm purposefully leaving a few of them in here so you can kind of see what happens. So we've got little grass chunks, little grass chunks here. I've got like a full on like shoot, um, really woody shoot. And within here, there's a whole bunch of small ones, a lot of little root fibers, and there's weed seeds in here and there is grass seed. So uh, I probably have some Kakuya grass and maybe some common Bermuda grass seeds in here. So usually when you buy seeds at the store, um, certain types of grasses, uh, they have to be coated. So Kakuya grass seed has to be coated because it's so darn stinking small. And so when they're in the soil, you just don't even see them. Uh, the common Kakuya, common Bermuda, and of course all of the weeds that we don't want uh, make seeds, they drop them in the soil and that's why we have weeds. So if I want to use native soil to grow desirable grass from seed, I don't want the weed seeds in here. So what I'm doing, and I'm only doing a minor, like a tiny little, uh, a tiny, tiny little demonstration here for you. And I'm going to do the rest of it off camera, probably in like a wheelbarrow, uh, so that I could do larger chunks at a time. But I'm going to go ahead and put this, look at there's a little ant. Death. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take this. And I'm going to loosely put a lid over it. And this is what we call, at least in the gardening world, we call um, sterilizing the soil. Usually you sterilize the soil when you're going to be doing seed starting. You can go out to the store and buy seed starting mix that is already sterile, but that costs a lot of money. And the seed starting mix does not match the native soil that you're going to be putting the grass into. That's why I think this is a pretty cool method. So you put some soil in there, you notice I'm not like filling it up like high. Uh, the higher you fill it, the more you're gonna have to do more time. You're gonna have to stop and stir. It's just like cooking. Uh, I'm just doing a small amount for demonstration because I'm only doing one plug. Two minutes. So long as the soil is a little bit moist and damp to the touch, uh, you're basically going to be killing all of the soil bacteria, all of the fungi, everything. Everything alive in the soil is going to die. It's going to be sterile. That's the whole point here. Once it comes out, it's going to be very hot. And we're going to, I'm going to put it here on the counter. I'm going to stir it up with a clean spoon and let it cool down. And then I'm going to put my sterile native soil into my little red solo cup. I've got to remember to poke that hole in the bottom and put it in the solo cup and then I'm going to put my actual desired seed in there once it's so cool to germinate it. All right, now we're done. That is literally all it takes to kill everything off. See how steamy it is? Now this grass is still green, but this is dead now that we've nuked it. And in theory, all of that, look at this, this is even floppy now. This wasn't floppy before. 
we've cooked it. So I'm gonna let this cool down. And then I'm gonna sift the bigger chunks out for, you know, just for the sake of planting. And I'm gonna put the soil in here. If I need some more to do the cup, then I'm just gonna grab more. Because uh, I wanna fill the cup all the way to the tippy top. If you notice, when I pulled the dirt out of the ground, um, I actually sunk a second solo cup into the ground full of dirt. It's basically a placeholder. So once I start growing the seed in this cup, once I feel like it's ready to go outside, all I gotta do is go outside, pull the cup in the ground out of the ground, and I got a perfect hole, and then the cup that I've been germinating in here, which I don't have yet because I'm starting the process, but I pull everything out, just like you pull a plant out of a garden, uh, like a nursery pot, and then you sink that right into the hole, this perfect hole. All right, with this soil all compacted down, now I, all I gotta do is just put my seed down. Now, that parkway strip that I dug this dirt out of is gonna be 100% buffalo grass in the very near future. So here's an unopened bag. This is what the buffalo grass seed looks like. I'm dropping it. That's what the buffalo grass seed looks like. There's a whole bunch of them. Buffalo grass seed, if you're patient, all you need is one germinated seed per square foot to develop a lawn. However, if you put a couple pounds per thousand square foot down, which is a lot of seeds per square foot, then it's going to come in much faster, so long as the soil is prepared and it, uh, and it germinates reasonably. Uh, because this is a plug, so how many of these would it take to be a square foot? I'm going to guess maybe nine of those. So really, I would just need one cup per square foot, but um, I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a handful of these in. Kind of push it down. Some seeds need to be deeper than others. I'm finding that buffalo grass, through my experimentation over the year, does pretty good when it's kind of deep. It will germinate when it's sitting on top of the soil, but certainly does do better when it's covered a bit. Right, let's do eight, why not? Why not? So if we do eight seeds per cup, and I do roughly nine cups per square foot, eight times nine, what is that, 72 seeds per square foot? Nobody really talks like that, but, uh, but that's still not a lot of seeds per square foot, so we should be pretty good. The whole parkway strip at this density will be a full lawn uh, in less than one season. I got sterile soil and it's native soil, so the soil consistency is exactly what is currently out there. And uh, I could put some peat moss over the top of this uh, to help it germinate. That's what you would do outside. But since I'm doing this inside, I might as well just cover it up with regular soil. So the regular soil on top of it is not going to be nearly as compacted. If I was outside, I'd want to like tamp this down pretty good. Probably use a peat moss to keep it moist. But since I'm inside, there's no wind and I can control the environment. I could keep it at a very stable temperature around 70... Well, what do we keep our house at? We keep our house at about 72 degrees. So this probably shouldn't take more than about six days to germinate. I don't know, maybe seven. We'll see. Now, like I said... I only dug a tiny little bit up for the purpose of showing you one plug. Uh, I'm going to do nine plugs per square foot, roughly, over the course of, I don't know, I'd have to remeasure that whole like parkway strip, but I'll probably do, I don't know, 100 square foot at a time uh, until I have the entire parkway strip plugged. Right now it's December 5th. If this stuff starts germinating somewhere around December 11th or so, I'll have a handful of buffalo grass seeds per pot, and then I'm gonna start um, babying them in the pots while I prepare the actual parkway strip to put the plugs in the ground. Buffalo grass can grow just fine in 50, 60 degree weather. It doesn't germinate well in 50 to 60 degree soil temperatures, uh, but as the temperature starts coming up, uh, towards the end of winter, at least where I live, it's going to be nice and warm soil uh, by probably February, certainly by the 1st of March. And uh, everything is really going to take off quickly uh, in the springtime. If you were doing a cold season grass, then man, this stuff is going to grow gangbusters in the house um, or in a garage. Just make sure to put it in a windowsill so that you're going to have some light. 
but this is literally it. Right now the soil is moist. So all I gotta do is just kinda like, I don't know, cover it. Let's see, where do I? This isn't like rocket science. You could just put like a plate over the top of it. Uh, it doesn't need sun uh, until it germinates. Now many of you might be wondering why I'd be going through all of this trouble making hundreds and hundreds of grass plugs uh, sterilizing the soil the whole way. Well, it's because I think that buffalo grass in particular is worth the effort. The thing is, most grass types, especially if you choose the right time of year, are very easy to seed. Buffalo grass is slow, it matures slowly, but the long-term benefits of having buffalo grass as your lawn type are immense. And I captured my thoughts perfectly, in my opinion, on this entire concept in the video that I have linked right up here. Lawns will be different in the future. This is why, this is why I'm growing buffalo grass. Make sure to watch this video next.